The Blood Reaver familiar was buffed in 2022, but Jagex is now planning to nerf it, and it'll likely happen soon as well. Join me as I discuss and highlight key information shared in the recent JMod Combat focused livestream. Whenever you're ready, grab your sourdough and brew, sit back, relax, and enjoy. The first topic mentioned in the livestream all the way at the beginning is a nerf or upcoming nerf to one of the most commonly used familiars in the game, the Blood Reaver. Now, the Blood Reaver is an absolute powerhouse. It can deal so much damage, especially if your target is poisonable and you're using all kinds of healing things such as the Vampirism or on Soul Split. Additionally, the Blood Reaver is also able to heal you in combat automatically by auto-firing its scroll or special attack, which is a little bit costly, but this thing is an absolute powerhouse. Unfortunately, it seems like Jagex is going to be nerfing the Blood Reaver somewhere in the near future. Um, there's Reaver changes. The <laughs> there's Re Reaver changes on the horizon. They're still still not confirmed for like a specific release, but it's something we've wanted to do for a while. Is kind of change the intense AFK nature of the Reaver. Um, so that will be coming at some point. But You're going to the uh, Blood Reaver, not the Reaver's ring. Oh yeah, no, not the Reaver's ring. That's my baby still. So that 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 one's got a good good another two years before I hit that. So don't worry, you're fine. Now, I'm a little bit worried because the Blood Reaver is a really cool familiar. It's not the only familiar you're going to be using, but it works in a lot of different scenarios. I mean, alternatively, you have the Ripper Demon and possibly the Calgarian Demon and maybe a couple of other ones. But the Blood Reaver is incredibly powerful. And what I think they might do is change it so that you're no longer able to auto fire the scrolls. But that's, you know, if they're talking about the AFK nature of the Blood Reaver, that's what I assume is most likely to happen in the case of a nerf or change to the Blood Reaver. Now, we don't know what will actually happen, but this will change the meta for some AFK methods and might crash one of the easiest money makers in the game, being farming Reaver binding contracts outside the next boss arena. Whether you're AFKing bosses or farming these contracts, enjoy it while you still can. The fourth Necromancy Conjurer, the Armored Phantom, was recently released into the game. From personal testing, I know that this thing is a little bit niche and not every player is going to enjoy it to the fullest, but it is an overall necromancy buff nonetheless. The ability is an area of effect ability and is not going to be useful in every situation. In fact, it's very niche and that's exactly what the mods wanted. In fact, let's hear it from the mods themselves as to why it won't be getting buffed. The idea that um, maybe it needs a buff. Um, I've seen people, some people say, oh, it needs a buff because it's only useful in these scenarios. And arguably that is the perfect sort of design. Like in most cases, a lot of things, when you want to add to a toolkit long-term, you want to find niches for things. You do not want everything to just be the best everywhere. It's pretty much why the Phantoms focuses on AOE more than single target. Um, if it was single target focus, it would just be another buff, so to speak, for boss encounters. Um, inherently like it does have its niche use in boss encounters right now but it's not like okay i will now use this ability all the time um the damage reduction is inherently a buff for sure um but that was always kind of planned with necromancy's four conjure yes to answer your question like we are happy where it is that we have no plans to buff any of it or nerf any of it um it in the same conversation the mods react to messages about an undead dragon conjure coming in the future a lot of dragons there's no you're not going to get an undead dragon sorry guys well well <laughs> hold on hold oh. on oh. no oh. but um Jorses. now that we've done the four basic conjures um sorry the four basic spirits i always call them conjures that's why everyone calls them but yeah anyway um is that we want to start exploring like more impactful ones, slot. right? Yeah, impactful spirits that have even more niche uses, but like give you choice. So, you know, maybe you have an undead dragon and it consumes two or three slots. So now you walk around with an undead skeletal dragon and a skeleton warrior. Um, the mm. undead skeletal dragon could be really strong. And also, some people have noticed if you look at things like Lord of Bones um, incantation, it specifically says skeletal or skeletons. It doesn't say skeleton warrior. The idea there is any skeleton spirits we add in the future will also affect things like Lord of Bones. Basically, what they're talking about here is adding new conjures that take up multiple slots in your conjure undead army ability. These could be new drops. These could be part of new skill trees. 
or something else. As someone who visited Jagex HQ for a necromancy playtest a long time prior to its release, I was surprised to hear the mods having considered additional skill trees in the past, something we could definitely still see introduced in the future. This could be conjures that use different kinds of ectoplasm and even hero conjures from the Barrows Brothers, as mentioned by the mods. Razia was always meant to, well not always meant to, there was a design that Razia was going to have his own skill tree. Um, which would give you access to some special um, sort of abilities. Uh, think, think corrupted uh, underworld energy, so green. People have also mentioned Barrows Brothers. They were always as well in our design documents as hero conjures um, to be able to like call upon like Torag or Gussens and stuff. Um, that's kind nice. of the space we're in, but like it's not on the horizon in the sense of like there is no plan right now to do one. But when we talk about rewards going forward, in the necromancy ability space more spirits bigger spirits are probably um quite likely as for other skills there were plenty of talks in the live stream about how other combat styles may feel more difficult to new players compared to necromancy due to there being a larger skill gap more cluttered abilities and the other styles being more reliant on either gear or local abilities such as Greater Ricochet. These kinds of incredibly powerful abilities are unsustainable to keep adding to the game because of power keep reasons, according to the mods. My two cents is that they can exist. They can't be as impactful as something like Greater Ricochet. I don't think you want something as meta-defining of meta-warping as Greco coming into Necro. And to an extent, I don't think it should really be there for the other styles either. Um, like, you don't want your core gameplay defined by a, an unlock that's just kind of arbitrary. It's unsustainable, especially from a power creep point of view. Um, that's that's what starts moving us kind of snowballing up down the hill. As such, future ability upgrades will likely be a little less meta-defining and more so augment the playstyle, even though the opinion on this is a little bit divided between the mods. It's also worth noting that the mods are looking into changing bleed abilities, perhaps in an upcoming game jam, but releasing new content definitely has the priority right now. There is an upcoming game jam at some point this year. I can't remember when, but there is one. Um, it may or may not be something that we look at. In a Reddit thread, Mod Breezy already confirmed that the Masterwork to Hate Sword will be improved to make it more desirable alongside the release of an upcoming Masterwork to ranged weapon to ensure consistency. My guess is that you'll need to perform another smithing step to augment it to obtain some kind of passive based on the wording during the stream. This idea of augmenting that Mod Pigeon mentions, I think you may have heard Breezy talk about it. I feel like, does, can anyone tell me if Breezy has spoke about this? If not, maybe I'm <laughs> no about idea. to spoil something. <laughs> oh, wait, if Breezy has spoken about... Just go ahead about... and spoil. Augmenting of stuff. I don't know. I have not heard a word of this before anywhere, including <clears throat> internally. So I, was, I would possibly hold off on that one. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's... Uh... I won't say. <laughs> the mods also discuss potential future changes to the EZK, so the Zark Sword. Where once changed, you will not want to have the weapon in your essence of finality anymore because it will be far more than just a spec weapon. Interestingly, if they do this, they will offer a free refund for EZK owners who slapped it into their essence of finality amulet. You know, we would like to do the FSOA passive and special attack. We did the Lengs, of course, which I think, again, I hope the chat agree, like Lengs are in a really good place now as well. Um, Raziel's arm guard has its passive special attack. Um, so I think we do want to go and look at FSOA and EZK and make them feel like the legendary weapons that they are. I think when we do <laughs> change it, you will not want it in your AOF. We would probably just refund everyone and just clear their AOFs. Um, only for EZK, we're not going to just like, you know, get rid of your ECV out of that. Uh, Here's some fun information or data about RuneScape's newest boss release, the Sanctum and Rebirth. And trust me, you're going to be surprised. Uh, at the moment, Sanctum, since boss release, is the most uniquely killed boss in the game. Sorry, I say boss, I mean, this called Sanctum, like uh, the whole thing. Sanctum mm. is the most uniquely killed thing every day right now. So of unique users playing RuneScape, of all bosses, Sanctum is the most killed one. Um, oh. Of all Sanctum kills every single day, on average, 17% are normal mode. And finally, what I also found interesting is that the mods are open to feedback related to making really old content less grindy. For example, the giant mole pet, or Jad actually dropping from Jad, Tuzzy having a threshold, Fatalis perhaps becoming more common, and so on. Um, I'm not saying we're changing it, by the way, we're not. But like, we should be asking those questions because the more bosses we add, the longer this stuff gets. Like, it is, a, it is an ever-growing list. And ultimately, you know, 
some of these bosses were out over 10 years ago do we really want you spending months there or however long it is um these are things like that we need to consider and they will affect those who've obviously obtained them but you know it's a i always use this analogy um the phone i bought 20 years ago isn't useful anymore but i paid a fortune for it um it's just the kind of the you know times change and i agree here at some point there's enough grind in the game already with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this one and feel free to share your thoughts down in the comments below catch you guys in the next one peace